Yeah, hello, good evening. So yeah, I'm Sandra. It was originally Annis Fitzhugh on the program, so I'm last minute substitute. Um, but Annis sends her regrets that she couldn't be here. Um, but I've worked with Annis for um, 10 years now at DCA in the print studio and um, as um, additions manager at DCA. And down to the way that Annis has kind of developed a research culture in the print studio um, and with the support of DCA, I'm just also beginning a part-time PhD in collaboration with DCA. So yeah, it's been a busy few weeks. Um, and this is kind of a, a lightning speed introduction just to how this research area has recently come together. So we have the print studio at DCA has a print studio here. It's embedded in the building just down the road, if you haven't already been, um, where we, over the last 20 years now, have worked with artists to create limited editions in print through the exhibitions program or through residencies. And when we invite them, it's a really open invitation. We don't pre-dictate what the outcome has to be. Um, and this has been Anis's, her sort of ethos, her way of working, um, being starting with dialogues, with experimentation, um, and using the support of the production facilities and the skilled staff that are around to try and develop some kind of artistic language in print to best explore the artist's ideas. And the hope is that this experience with us in the studio opens up new possibilities, new avenues, new ways of working for the artists. And this is feedback that we really often get, um, that it's been really valuable, um, the collaboration itself to the development of artist practice. But this conceptual t and technical development of the prints is really often ephemeral and undocumented. It stays kind of hidden in the print studio behind the doors there. Um, and in a similar way, print itself is often called misunderstood. It's called paradoxical, problematic. Um, and writing around print sometimes sits kind of somewhere in easily um, between skilled craft, design, um, art, graphic process. It is in itself a practice of intermediates and transitions. It's a collaborative thing. It is both, acts, um, both action and documentation. So my interest in the process and the environment of print has come about from two main things. Um, years and years ago, I studied, worked, and taught languages abroad. And this kind of established my interest in the capacity for an intensive period of dialogic exchange in an unknown environment to be a creative, transformative encounter. And these saussure linguistic diagrams somehow stuck in the back of my head somehow. And on the other hand, one of the first exhibitions I worked with in the States looked at the idea of the museum as an alternate social space. It drew on Foucault's theory of heterotopias, which are um, he called alternate or other spaces, such as hospitals, saunas, um, gardens, in which usual social norms and time frames don't necessarily apply, um, where certain rituals or gestures are adopted. And Foucault called these um, in-between places. Part of this same exhibition was Rikrit Tiruvanit's Untitled Free, which was a, a Thai food kitchen in which gallery staff cooked and served the artist's Thai green curry recipe um, to visitors to the museum, creating a social space in which visitors could eat, talk, have conversations, share ideas. It was a particular environment provided to break down barriers, to facilitate conversation, discourse, social exchange, sharing of ideas. And this is all part of the so-called um, social turn in the 1990s, um, which has been discussed a lot um, in terms of art activated through social exchange. So with this linguistic diagram on one side of my brain and alternate social spaces and Thai green curry somewhere on the other side of my memory, um, I began working in the print studio at DCA. And though it might sound like a completely different thing, somehow this environment that I saw with the dialogues um, the experimental exchanges, the collaborations that were taking place there were actually quite familiar. Um, and now it's probably a good idea Anna's isn't here because I'm comparing it to a, a Thai curry <laughs> the print studio. But it was, it was kind of like having that conversation over the curry or learning a language in a foreign country through immersion. Um, this philosophy of cooperative creativity and idea exchange is a really central dynamic part of printmaking practice. And there are a lot of parallels between the collaborative studio and this idea of heterotopia. It is a place of ritual. It's outside the artist's usual practice, a place for concentrative creative activity. Um, it has an alternate 
um, rules, rule sets, methods, vocab, even recipes for the order of things where people come together in converse, conversation around concepts, techniques, and materials. Um, however, participation and social exchange in studies of print have really received very little attention. Also much discussed in recent years is the value of an anthropological approach to contemporary art, especially with works like this that carry this embedded social element in their practice. And anthropologists often talk of this in terms of the gift, this social exchange. Uh, Roger Sansi is one example that discusses works such as Tiravanit's Thai Kitchen and, and how they generate an ephemeral community, uh, a situation of encounter, a social relation, in which, as sociologist Marcel Mauss said, one gives oneself while giving. And Sansi mainly talks about this in terms of deliberate interactive works in gallery con contexts or public contents, contexts. But this social turn when it comes to exchange and reciprocity in artistic production still remains largely unexamined and undocumented. But this idea of the gift, it lends itself really well to the practice of collaborative printing, not just to the social environment, but also the idea um, of mul multiplicity and democracy, um, the lack of hierarchy with print, its dis distribution and um, openness to interpretation when it moves between different contexts. So I'm going to give you just one quick example um, of a project we did with Andrew Lacon. He did this amazing floor installation in the galleries in DCA a year or so back. Um, called Fragments, and his installation in the gallery is centered on the flooring material terrazzo and its cultural residences, resonances, and it's a mix of cast concrete and leftover marble chips. And having started with um, photography and moved then into sculpture, he talked about how his interest lay in the difference between the experience of an object versus the experience of an image of an object. And so, interestingly, with the gift in mind, our project with Andrew Lacon started with the arrival of this great package in the print studio, and it was a bit like Christmas. We all gathered around and opened it up, and it was full of these broken bits of um, terrazzo from his floor installation, bags of ground-up marble dust, and notes to start experimenting with. And this was our starting point, his concepts of material transitions between one context and another. And this heterotopic notion of betweenness or transitional space was an approach that he carried through to his exploration of print production. Working closely with Anis Fitzhugh and the Print Studio team, we started using broken pieces of terrazzo from his sculpture to transfer ink by pressing it directly onto paper. And we found that the imprint was actually affected by the makeup of marble within the concrete mix. Some areas seemed to repel the ink and left this mottled, patterned effect. And then conversations led on to the idea of hand-making paper so that the integrity of making carried through to the substrate that we printed on. And so marble dust was incorporated into the paper. And this layered visual language with its physical traces constantly refers us back to the other origins of the materials and um, the actions by which they were made. And this structure of referral between interrelated components is also really central in linguistic theory the semiotics of Charles Sanders Peirce have been really widely adopted in art and anthropology and um, talks about various categories of signs that we might read. So, for example, smoke from a fire, um, a scar, or footprints in the sand. And this indexical language of cause and effect is one that printers are really familiar with. Drawing on these similar linguistic ideas, art historians have talked about the semiotic relationship between live performance and its documentation. Amelia Jones, in her essay, Presence in Absentia, has talked um, about Jack Derrida's ideas to explain the photograph as both proof and deferral of the live act of performance, and how it points to the lack of the presence of the body, calling this documentation a terrifying menace, to use Jack Derrida's words, to examine our performance our reading of performance through its documentary traces. And this problematic relationship or this idea of print not quite fitting um, echoed something I was constantly seeing and hearing in the print studio. Print was excluded from main discourse. Um, it was misunderstood. It was contradictory, paradoxical. And I started to think that while I think perhaps this visible openness and duality was something that was really interesting to artists and helpful and interesting for them to play with, 
I wondered if perhaps the problem with print and what's missing with print was a lack of consideration of the acts of printmaking, its situation, its nuances, its live processes, all those things that the final print through this lack is pointing towards. Perhaps that was what was missing. And perhaps with this in mind, could print be seen as this terrifying menace that Derrida was talking about? The act of printmaking recorded through physical contact itself creates the material outcome. But despite this documentary trace being rooted in the practice itself, this relationship has never really been explored properly. With writing or photography, there's a distance. The act or performance can't really exist without, can really exist without the photograph. However, with prints, one can't really exist without the other. Um, this is an example by Mark Wallinger, who, true to his practice when he came to work with us, used himself, his body, to explore his identity as an artist through print. His fingerprints directly on the page say, I was here touching this paper, and now I'm not. The print matrix is another example, and I'm sorry I couldn't resist the matrixy background <laughs> at this point, um, of the ways that print can work through transitions and relational processes. The matrix is the thing that's used to hold the image that then makes up the print, whether it's a plate in etching or a woodblock, as with Alberta Whittle's recent prints with us. Um, the matrix acts a bit like a material bridge for transition between one stage and another. It is a site for exchange. It is both a giver and a receiver. And this, again, relates really well to the idea of gift exchange. And this, not to mention the etymology of the term matrix, invites further exploration into why and how prints relate to and point to the live processes and materials by which they were made. And so, with all this in mind, my questions are, if there is a lack with print, what is it that's lacking? If there is presence and absentia, then what is absent? If prints are indexical and they are indeed pointing us at something, then what on earth are they pointing to? Um, and so this is really where I'm beginning through participant observation in the studio, through interviews, through looking at building on the archive. In order to better understand print, I think we need to open up the way in which we examine it by approaching printmaking as a social endeavor to look at those transitional, those between spaces, and how artists play really cleverly with all these nuances to create meaning in their work. I think I'm out of time now. That was a speed 10 minutes. But um, anyone that's interested, please do get in touch and come and visit us in the print studio. We're just down the road to come and see what we're doing in Dundee.